Nations of the world should support the brave people of Iran who want to rid themselves of this evil regime. Responsible governments should not only support Israel in rolling back Iran's aggression, they should join Israel. They should join Israel in stopping Iran's nuclear weapons program. In this body, in the Security Council, we're going to have a deliberation in a few months. And I call on the Security Council to snap back UN Security Council sanctions against Iran, because we must all do everything in our power to ensure that Iran never gets nuclear weapons. For decades, I've been warning the world against Iran's nuclear program. Our actions delayed this program by perhaps a decade. But we haven't stopped it. We've delayed it, but we haven't stopped it. Iran now seeks to weaponize its nuclear program for the sake of the peace and security of all your countries. For the sake of the peace and security of the entire world, we must not let that happen. And I assure you, Israel will do everything in its power to make sure it doesn't happen. So ladies and gentlemen, the question before us is simple. Which of these two maps that I showed you will shape our future? Will it be the blessings of peace and prosperity for Israel, our Arab partners, and the rest of the world? Or will it be the curse in which Iran and its proxies spread carnage and chaos everywhere? Israel has already made its choice. We've decided to advance the blessing. We're building a partnership for peace with our Arab neighbors while fighting the forces of terror that threatened that peace. For nearly a year, the brave men and women of the IDF have been systematically crushing Hamas's terror army that once ruled Gaza. On October 7th, the day of that invasion into Israel, that terror army numbered nearly 40,000 terrorists. It was armed with more than 15,000 rockets. It had 350 miles of terror tunnels an underground network bigger than the New York subway system, which they used to wreak havoc above and below ground. A year later, the IDF has killed or captured more than half of these terrorists, destroyed over 90% of their rocket arsenal, and eliminated the key segments of their terror tunnel network. In major military operations, in major military operations, we destroyed nearly half of Hamas's, sorry, nearly all of Hamas's terror battalions, 23 out of 24 battalions. Now to complete our victory, we are focused on mopping up Hamas's remaining fighting capabilities. We are taking out senior terrorist commanders and destroying remaining terrorist infrastructure. But all the while, all the while, and I'll say this one more time, we remain focused on our sacred mission bringing our hostages home. And we will not stop until that mission is complete. Now, ladies and gentlemen, even with Hamas's greatly diminished military capability, the terrorists still exercise some governing power in Gaza by stealing the food that we enable aid, ad, sorry, that we enable aid agencies to bring into Gaza. Hamas steals the food. And then they hike the prices. They feed their bellies. And then they fill their coffers with money that they extort from their own people. They sell the stolen food at exorbitant prices. And that's how they stay in power. Well, this too has to end. And we're working to bring it to an end. And the reason is simple. Because if Hamas stays in power, it will regroup, rearm, and attack Israel again and again and again, as it is vowed to do. So Hamas has got to go.
Just imagine, for those who say, well, Hamas has to stay, it has to be part of a post-war Gaza, imagine in a post-war situation in World War II, imagine allowing the defeated Nazis in 1945 to rebuild Germany. It's inconceivable. It's ridiculous. It didn't happen then. It's not going to happen now. This is why Israel will reject any rule for Hamas in a post-war Gaza. We don't seek to resettle Gaza. What we seek is a demilitarized and de-radicalized Gaza. Only then, only then, can we ensure that this round of fighting will be the last round of fighting. We are ready to work with regional and other partners to support a local civilian administration in Gaza committed to peaceful coexistence. As for the hostages, I have a message for the Hamas captors. Let them go. Let them go. All of them. Those alive today must be returned alive. And the remains of those whom you brutally killed must be returned to their families. Those families here with us today and others in Israel deserve to have a resting place for their loved ones, a place where they can grieve and remember them. This war, ladies and gentlemen, this war can come to an end now. All that has to happen is for Hamas to surrender, lay down its arms, and release all the hostages. But if they don't, but if they don't, we will fight until we achieve victory, total victory. There is no substitute for it.